Hey Soul family, welcome back to the channel. This is the White Feather Tarot and in today's reading we're doing a, a reading about achieving what you want. What do you need to do to achieve what you want? And to do this reading we are going to be picking three piles together. I already see the three. I see one, two, and three. Let's see what we have for today's reading. For pile number one, we have mortification. For pile number two, we have Chiron. And for pile number three, we have Smoke. If you'd like to pick with crystals, let me add these right now. There we go. So for pile number one, we have the white howlite, and this is what your crystal, let me adjust that so you can see it. This is what your crystal looks like. For pile number two, we have the Mukite Jasper, and this is what your crystal looks like. For pile number three, we have the Snowflake Obsidian, and this is what your crystal looks like. So, take a look at which one of these three piles or three crystals you're the most drawn to. And that will probably be the pile for you here today. But as I always say, if you feel drawn to more than one pile or perhaps all of the piles, trust your intuition. Whether it's leading you to just one and you know that's the pile, or perhaps several in a certain order, or maybe all. In all cases, it is your magic that leads you to the right readings. So be open to listen to it. See where it's leading you comfortably. And as usual, you'll find the timestamps down in the description box. Click on your times and I'll see you in your readings. Hey Soul family, welcome to your preparation and pile picking process. It is so lovely to have you here as always. We're preparing for your reading uh, of what you need to do to achieve what you want. And to prepare for your reading today, these will be the cards that we will be using in your reading. Let me introduce them to you. On the left are the Oracle decks and on the right are the tarot decks that we will be using for your reading today. All right, so let's get straight into it. If you're interested in any of the decks that I use, you'll find that I always list their names down in the description box for you to check them out whenever you feel called to. Okay, so the intention for today's reading, as mentioned, is what do you need to do to achieve what you want. All right.
we'll be taking two cards from each of the tarot decks, as we always do. All right, so our three piles for today's reading are now ready. Let's put them together neatly for your reading. Take pile one. white how light pile number two there we go let's keep it right there and place the main card up top with the Mukite Jasper and pile number three. There we go. Keep it right there. And place the third card up top with the snowflake obsidian. 
and my dear beautiful soul family your piles are now ready for today's reading thank you so much for spending this time with me i always cherish it cherish it and love it love you guys very much and let's get straight into your reading hi pile number one welcome to your reading you have chosen the white how light as well as this mortification card. So interesting, can't wait to see how this fits into your reading. And as you know, we're taking a look at uh, what do you need to do to achieve what you want. Uh, and to do this reading, we're going to be taking a look at your oracle cards first. So my dear pile number one, you have, oh, let me adjust that, there we go. You have the skunk and magnolia with protection and with the skunk and mortification i see something in common here you know a, a bad odor you know with a bad odor with the decay that comes with mortification the odor that comes with the skunk but it does say protection so i'm really intrigued let's see what else you have you have listen ah so interesting okay you also have jupiter and capricorn with control very interesting reading so far let's take a look at the rest of your cards my dear pile number one you have whoa starting off your reading with the wheel of fortune so cool all right you also have the Four of Swords. All the different tools to cut something. Okay. You also have <coughs> the Four of Wands. Mm. You know what? This is crazy. Um, I'm seeing the Four of Wands, the Four of Swords, Fortune sounds like a four, Fortune, so four, 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 and then Jupiter here, of course, looks like the number four, the symbol for Jupiter, and here, with Listen, you have 45, so again, we have four. I'm wondering, have you been seeing the number four a lot? Because if you have, my dear pile number one, I do see a clear sign for you that you're going to be having a lot of luck in getting fortune in whatever you're set out to do. That's very clear in your reading. If you've been seeing a lot of fours, they really are trying to tell you that you will be succeeding greatly in whatever you put your mind to. All right, that's very clear here. You have the Empress card. The, the star, wow, okay. Very favorable cards, my dear pile number one. You have the Six of Cups. You have the Eight of Wands. And you have the Page of Pentacles. Right. So what are we seeing in your reading exactly with regards to what you need to do to achieve what you want? And achieve what you want, that's the first thing that we're seeing in your reading right off the bat before everything. We've been seeing a lot of signs leading to a promise that you will be achieving what you want and you have the star, star, star card here. It is a card that shows that whatever you're hoping and dreaming of will come true. It's a very favorable card to have along with the Wheel of Fortune. You're very lucky, my dear pile number one, to have these sort of cards in a reading where we're taking a look at what you need to do to achieve what you want. So right off the bat, I'm seeing with the mortification here and the skunk as I have explained in the beginning, you know, the mortification process is decay, it's decomposition, 
what once was composed now is decomposing. So we're seeing a bad order in the order in the two with the skunk and the mortification, which tells me to listen to this bad order, rather smell it, of course. But if there is a bad order, this means that something is decaying, something is not working. And this is exactly where you need to start with achieving what you want, my dear pile number one, a clear message here of what you first need to do. If something smells bad, it smells bad for a reason. It's grabbing your attention and it wants you to listen to something. Why is it not working in the favorable way that you want? What is it trying to tell you? And that will be the key for where to begin to fix what is not working. Because from there, you will find your way to making something work. And the reason this is so important in your reading is because in the Eight of Wands here, it looks like to me that perhaps you keep fixing uh, something in the same way every single time, giving you the same result. And you see here with the Eight of Wands, we see a farmer who keeps cutting the weed and it keeps regrowing back. And the reason I say that is because if you look up top with the with the um with these rods that keep growing they're cut straight which means oh sorry you cannot see what i'm saying there we go they're cut straight up top which means that the farmer keeps cutting them and they keep growing and so your biggest message here is that in order to change your luck and change your fortune you have to start doing things in a different way than what you usually do because um, you have been fixing this in the same way every time and it's it keeps giving you the same message, sorry, every single time of something not working. And so the first clue is to reassess things, not to do the same thing that you keep doing and to take a look instead of at take a look at what is smelling bad what is not working so let me give you an example of what i'm trying to say in terms of what is smelling bad let's say you have a metaphysical shop right and next to you are other metaphysical shops and you all are selling amazing things and let's say you're so into what you're doing you are an incredible witch you look into ancient texts and you find out ancient recipes of different spells and you're really 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 cool person and along your studies you've discovered an amazing spell in a certain grimoire for one reason or the other that helps you attract nightingales towards you and you're like oh my god that is so brilliant i am sure when people know about this they're gonna buy these spells and it's gonna run out i better create a ton of it because i know in the next morning when i put these spells up for sale to attract nightingales towards you or naturally um, everyone's gonna love this spell and you start creating these spells and you put them out for sale on in your metaphysical shop next day people come in they're buying you know beautiful crystals from this shop right there and they're buying a spell here and some sage there and so on and they come to your shop and you're like I've studied this, you don't understand. I found a spell that helps attract nightingales towards you. It really works, it's magical, it's magnificent, it's gonna blow your mind. And people are like, oh my God, that is such an interesting story, but they don't buy these spells and they move on. And you're really flabbergasted because you've just discovered an amazing spell and you don't understand why they're not buying this amazing spell so you so the next day you're like fine maybe if they just know more about it more people know about it they're definitely gonna buy this spell and you create this huge poster and you put it next to your shop and you're like guys i have a spell that attracts nightingales towards you 
any time of the day, anywhere you are, they come to you, they befriend you, and you talk about them, you put posters, you've put up some flyers, and people pass, they listen to your amazing story, they are amazed by you, don't get me wrong, they're absolutely amazed by your finding, but they still don't buy the spell, and they move on. And <coughs> you try all the different ways and techniques to sell this spell, you read more about marketing, and it's still not selling. And you're perplexed at the moment. Why aren't they selling this amazing spell? And here is what it's meant by listen to what is smelling bad. Maybe you are absolutely convinced with this spell and it must be amazing. I mean, finding, finding it in an old grimoire must be magnificent. But what you are not listening to is perhaps what other people are interested in. If you look closely, you might find that these people are careful with the budget that they have on what they're going to be spending their uh, money this month when it comes to metaphysical needs. And maybe they're looking for spells on how to increase their wealth or spells on how to heal from pain or spells on how to find the treasure they're looking for and so on and so forth. And it's nothing against this amazing spell that you found, but it's rather more about listening to what's not working rather than continuing to focus on that very same thing that is not working. And that is here what I mean by having an open mind to listen to what is not working rather than trying to do the same thing over and over again. So with the Four of Swords, it's about resting to think it out and to see where this bad smell or bad result is coming from, really. Is it coming from what you think is not working? Or maybe there is another reason that you may want to explore that is calling for your attention, wanting you to listen to something. Because I feel here with the page of pentacle, with the, with the page of pentacles, that once you discover after some deep thought what this message has been trying to tell you for a long time with the six of cups, you'll start putting yourself in the right direction. In fact, with the Empress here, this is the new beginning of a new road where you finally find the success that you are looking for. This is the road that you will be celebrating with the Four of Wands here in terms of achieving exactly what you want and what you dream of, uh, my dear pile number one. This is the exact message that I see here for you. And this here with the protection card shows me that this is not working out for a reason. It is there to guide you to look in the right direction for you, what you are meant to create, what you are meant to do. Sometimes we are stuck in our ways so much and we feel so disappointed that something is not working in the way that we have in mind. But as time goes by and as we change directions, we find that we're doing something that we like in a much better way, getting us the results that we want in a much better way. And we realize later on that we've been stuck on something and God knows why we've been so stuck, stuck on something in a certain way. When we try other things, we really see that it was so much better for us than the way we are insisting on doing it. That's the exact message that I see here for you in terms of what you need to do in order to achieve what you want, uh, my dear pile number one. Because my dear pile number one, your pile is so lucky. There has been a message right from the get-go, a promise, a constant promise of good luck, great fortune, and your dreams coming true should you follow a, a different path. It doesn't mean a different field or anything. It just means a different path from the one you're already in. 
by listening and attuning to what could really be going wrong rather than what you believe may be going wrong, my dear pile number one. And it's really all about inspecting and asking questions. If it's a project, then maybe asking your professor or your manager, what would you like to see better? If it's your own project, maybe a survey, asking uh, the people who love what you provide, what they want, listening to um, from uh, from the other person's perspective and not just your own combining both will give you a much broader perspective to what you need to do to achieve what you want. My dear pile number one, that was your reading and your exact message that I see for you on what you need to do to achieve what you want. This was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Also, uh, if you enjoy Zodiac Tarot readings, make sure you check out my other channel. It's the first link in the description box. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book, My Dear Pile Number One. This book could really help you out in um, setting your goals and achieving what you want. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate reading it, but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. And so if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find the link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number one, it was such a pleasure doing this reading for you. Thank you so much for tuning in, wishing you the best of luck, and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye! Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the beautiful Mookite Jasper as well as Chiron. Very interesting. Let's see how this fits into your reading today. And, and, and we're taking a look at what you need to do to achieve what you want. And to do your reading, we're going to be starting off with your oracle cards first. So you have the boar and pumpkin with confidence. All right, very cool. You also have clear away old energies. Ah, really interesting. Okay. Mm hmm. You have the sun in Scorpio with endurance, right? Let's now take a look at your tarot cards. So you have the king of swords, the three of swords, mm -hmm. you have the chariot, You have the Hermit card. Hmm. Okay. You have the Death card. Interesting. Huh? You have the Ace of Pentacles. The Ten of Wands. Right. I'm sorry. These are the Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords. And you have the Six of Swords. So cool. I mean, if there is a universe communicating to us, it's certainly communicating to us here. It's unbelievable. Really, your reading here is talking about moving on from failure or from things that didn't work out. So here with Chiron, we know that Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron goes through difficult situations, uh, goes through the pain, but through it, transforms, learns so much, heals and becomes the teacher himself. So here with clear away old energies, we see that in your reading, your 
spirit guides are saying that you're not meant to fail, that you're not meant to stop where you are now. You're meant to achieve exactly what you want. And everything that happened in the past that didn't work out was only there for feedback. And it's now time to pick this feedback, learn from it, see what it was guiding for you to do, and move away the old energies, put the failures and the things that didn't work out in the past and to start gaining the confidence and the power to get back up again and start all over. There is this idea with the King of Swords, you know, the King of Swords is not emotional, but rather does what needs to get done. There's a bar barbecue, then we need to prepare everything for everyone to have a great time. And so it's all about being pragmatic, t taking the feedback, doing what needs to get done and moving away from feeling sad over spilt milk or anything that did not work out in the past. Perhaps you've done a magnificent job in the past and it was spoiled over unfairness because I see a beautiful cake here that is beautifully ba baked but is being spoiled by the knives themselves that were supposed to hold them up and present them. So maybe you even did everything that is possible and it could have been spoiled by some sort of unfairness. It could have been spoiled by things that were out of your hands, it could have been spoiled by mistake. In all cases, your reading is really inviting you to start and you because otherwise, not only are you going to stay in your place, but you're never going to move away from wanting to achieve what you want to achieve. Because simply, you're supposed to achieve it, my dear pile uh, number two. And so here we see with the Ten of Swords, do you see all of these swords? Um, they represent the mind and thoughts. And the reason for that is because there's not a single drop of blood in this person. We see that this person is in sort of a claustrophobic situation. They're in a very closed box, signifying that they have closed their minds and they're being, <coughs> excuse me, they're being, they're suffering by their very same own thoughts and not by anything from the outside world. And so there is an invitation here to move away from the past and to look forward to the future. And that's what we see in this specific Six of Swords. We see a person who has seen a town, um, maybe there was a civil war or something. They've left this town and, they, and you, we see a big bubble from their head where they're thinking and planning for their future because what is most important is what is to come and not what has happened. And so here with these two cards, we clearly see an invitation to start anew, to build your power back up and to decide to not uh, hurt yourself with, with the past, with what happened, with what you could have done, with what's not fair, with what should have happened but did not happen and all of these uh, types of thoughts, to put them behind, they happened for a reason, you will understand why later on, but you're meant to pick yourself up with the endurance card and to start again. Instead of thinking of the past, thinking, right, what do I need to do now to transform the situation? Because we can see in your cards here that it's definitely going to transform for you. It's definitely going to be in a, you're definitely going to be in a great situation and position with the King of Swords here. But it's really all about deciding to start thinking ahead and not think in the past, uh, my dear pile number two. That's really the key here for you to move forward, this time with the hermit, with awareness, especially with the illumination of the sun here. Learning from the past, taking it as feedback, and now seeing what you want to do, to do it right this time. You will be absolutely supported, my dear pile number two. Things will work out beautifully for you. They're meant to work out this time for you. And it is 
um, considered in your reading as a new beginning, an invitation to just start anew. And you will learn and see that everything that has happened did in fact happen for a reason. It's meant with Chiron to teach you something, to guide you and support you in the right direction, although it does not look like it uh, when it initially happens, uh, my dear pile number two. You will see amazing results in your path ahead this time with the chariot. This time it's going to move quickly and it's going to move with in the right direction with the, with the hermit. This time you're equipped with more awareness, you're equipped with more information, you're illuminated, you know what not to do before what you are meant to do. You're just so much more prepared and equipped this time. And you will see, see the death card this year all along, alone, giving us a signification that this time you will see a great transformation, far bigger than what you have ever seen before, my dear pile number two. You're just being invited to have that type of confidence this time, to have confidence that it will work, to have the faith that it will work. And you will see that whatever you work on, just like the barbecue in the King of Swords, your success is not just going to uh, be apparent to you, but it's going to be widespread. You know how when you barbecue in the in the backyard and different houses can smell that beautiful barbecue set smell and everyone wants a piece of it, you know? That's the kind of, <coughs> excuse me, success that I see here for you this time. It's going to be so widespread, everyone's going to know about it. Not that you want everyone to know about it, but that's the type of energy that I'm seeing here for you. It's going to go widespread. Everyone's going to know about it. It's going to smell it. It's going to mm, enjoy what you're doing. Uh, everyone's going to be enjoying what you're presenting and doing, and doing and will love to be part of it, just like a, a barbecue, uh, my dear pile number two. All right, so now that we know the main message of taking feedback and having the confidence to start and you let's get some oh my god do you see that the star card what you hope for and dream for is going to come true for you my dear pile number two let's get some guidance specific guidance on what you need to do to begin right away with this new path or to begin a new wow this, these two stood out right away Oh, these are three cards. So what is pile number two advice to do exactly to begin anew? You have the three of wands and it's really interesting. With the three of wands, I'm getting the idea of just starting right away. Just begin, uh, my dear pile number two. And, you know, you will see um, the path ahead with every step that you take. Every step that you take is going to illuminate the path ahead for you every single step and that's exactly what we see here as well okay you might be confused on which way to begin and really there is no right way it's all about <coughs> excuse me setting your foot just beginning and it's going to take you uh, automatically just like a magnet towards the right path okay you have the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is very significant in your reading here. It keeps popping up for you. And it's very clear here uh, that your main message of what you need to do to start right away is to end this cycle of torture. Ten of Swords is an end of a cycle. To stop thinking, most importantly, to stop thinking about what went wrong, that... Um, since it failed in the past, it's going to fail this time. Because it gets us into this paradoxical type of energy where we cannot pull ourselves out of it any longer. And so don't get yourself stuck with these type of thoughts. Let the past be in the past and have the faith that this reading is really inviting you to take have the faith that everything is going to work out fine. In fact, you are going to be achieving your dreams this time. It's about letting the past 
be in the past, forget about everything that didn't work. It is going to work out for you now. Everything happens for a reason. There is a promise that it's working out for you this time, my dear pile number two. And you have the magician card. And with the magician card, we see someone who's skilled looking very closely at something. And it's here talking about being mindful of the details, my dear pile number three. Look at the little details that you may have not considered in the past when you think about what do I need to do now when it comes to taking feedback so that I do things better. What did I not pay much attention to that was important for the success of my project or my dream? What do I need to rather now put my attention towards um, that will have the most significant results. And so it's not really about <coughs> filling up our time, doing many things and then wondering why it didn't work. With the magician card here, I'm seeing specifics of focusing on what works and putting your effort in this area first before you focus on the other different uh, types of areas, really focusing on what works. And with, what, with whatever works, it's being very meticulous and putting quality in that area that makes the big difference. This is exactly what I'm seeing in this magician card for you. To put your focus first on what is important. Secondly, to uh, pay attention to detail to make sure that you provide the best quality when it comes to these areas that are the most important. And this is exactly what I see in your reading. Your reading was almost speaking to us. It's <laughs> so detailed, so, um, I want to say obvious, I mean, so clear in, in delivering the message of what you need to do exactly. Have faith, my dear pile number two, you are going to make it this time. You're going to see how much you're going to succeed this time. And just like Chiron, it is the, <coughs> the wounded healer. You've gone through a wound and now you're going to be the one with the experience on how to do it right this time. My dear pile number two, this was your reading. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Also, if you enjoy Zodiac Tarot readings, make sure you check out my other channel. It's the first link in the description box. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book, My Dear Pile Number Two. This book could really help you out in um, achieving the things that you want, especially in that project that you want. It's very simple. It can help guide you on how to be a productive person and to enjoy the journey. It's small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate reading it in the first place, but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. And so if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. There is also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number two, thank you so much for tuning in and for giving me the opportunity to deliver this amazing message to you. Thank you. I wish you the best of luck from my heart. I know you're going to do this. All the best of luck, my dear pile number two, and I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye. Hi, pile number three, welcome to your reading. You have chosen the snowflake obsidian as well as smoke. So interesting. I wonder how this is going to fit into your reading. And today we're taking a look at what you need to do to achieve what you want. Can't wait to get straight into your reading, my dear pile number three let's now take a look at your oracle cards first to give us a strong clue of what your reading is talking about and what it is advising you to do so you have the ram and dahlia with determination 
really interesting. I think I'm starting to pick up what this reading is saying. You know, I love tarot readings, tarot, tarot, the, um, the art of tarot reading so much because I really feel something is talking to us. It's unbelievable. So let me tell you what I see in a second. You also have create silence. You have sun in Taurus with, oh, sorry, with acquisition. There we go. Let's now take a look at your tarot cards to have a full picture of what your reading is saying exactly. You have the death card with um, a jar that says everything expires, real salmonella. Interesting. And we see a couple of flies here uh, in the death card. Okay. You have the three of cups. Mm. This looks like mayonnaise. All right. You have the eight of swords, right? right. It makes a lot of sense. You have the six of wands, amazing. You have the ace of cups. Mm. So clear. You have the seven of swords. Yes, yes, yes. You also have the knight of cups. Yes, and I love the specific knight of cups. And finally, you have the ace of cups. Do notice that you have the ace of cups twice. And it's really significant, actually, in your reading. Right. So here, I'm seeing that my dear pile uh, number uh, three, I'm seeing that you are full of potential. You really can make your dreams come true for yourself. Unlike the other piles, it's not, um, it's not something that you may not be seeing or you may not be considering or not knowing exactly what to do. Not at all. In your pile, my dear pile number three, we can clearly see someone who has strong potential with the six of wands of a humongous success. And the only thing standing in your way is smoke. And smoke is an illusion, which really shows me that nothing phenom nothing drastic is really actually in your way. But it's really simply about determination, uh, my dear pile number two. It's simply about taking action. And with the death card here, you know, the death card can be amazing. It either shows us an end of a something, of something, or it shows us a transformation of something. And they're both in your hands. You can either end great potential for success, or you can transform your situation very easily to creating the success that you want. It's really all in your hands, <coughs> my dear pile number one. And here your reading is suggesting that it's all about putting in the necessary effort. You know, with smoke, it's like something, there's a warning. Um, with smoke, there's a fire, right? And so we should become alert when we see the smoke, which means that something is burning, something is not going right, and we should take our attention towards whatever it is that's burning there and creating all these plumes of smoke that is not allowing us to see ahead or in front of us. And sometimes this fire could be a certain maybe habit that we're not doing right, that keeps bringing up all these plumes of smoke in our faces. And it'll continue to grow until we address that specific fire uh, that is going on, that is preventing us from seeing ahead, from seeing our dream, that is standing, that's something that we can't hold, but it, it is physically there, standing between us and our dreams. And really, with the fire here, I see that the alert is all about being determined, or rather, putting in the action to do what we want, as opposed to the silence here with create silence. I see 
um, in your reading the idea that nothing is being done. And it's all about ideas with Eight of Swords that is keeping you stuck in your place. Ideas like maybe uh, 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 tricky ideas with the Seven of Swords, like maybe I'll start tomorrow. Someday I'm going to do this. Um, all right, tomorrow I'm going to be serious. Or um, <coughs> I don't know where to start. This is such a big thing. And so on and so forth. Forth. There are a lot of ideas that your mind plays tricks on you, it seems, preventing you to start that very same thing that your heart is yearning for. It's really all about, with the determination here, putting in the needed effort. In fact, with this Knight of Cups, we see something really significant. We see someone who has gone down into the depth of the ocean to find the cup that they are looking for, so much so that their armor started breaking down and their patina turned green because it shows the effort that they've put in to bring out um, the cup that they want from the depth of the sea. So really, it's all about uh, putting in effort. The alchemical process of what you need to do to make your magic happen is there. You've got it, my dear pal number three. You have got it. And it's just about quieting down these terrible thoughts that are um, pluming uh, your sight from seeing the success that you want. Things like, for example, I'll start tomorrow, or this is too big for me to tackle, or I don't think I have the capacity because I keep promising myself and I don't do anything about it, or focusing too much on the acquisition, or rather focusing too much on what you want to receive rather than uh, the type of effort uh, that you need to put in to achieve what you want. And it's all about being patient, not feeling frustrated because you didn't get the results that you want yet, to forget about the results completely when it's time to take action. And whenever the results come, they will come for you and you will be celebrating it. You will be very proud of what you've done and you will surely feel like you deserve uh, the things that you are now receiving. But first of all, it's about putting off the fire, that warning that's standing between you and exactly what you want to achieve. Ace of Cups coming up twice shows is, is a strong invitation to just begin, uh, my dear pile uh, number three, to just begin, to break that silence and to start doing what your heart is desiring for. Uh, forget about the results, forget about um, broken promises that you've given to yourself, forget about the things that you wanted to do, how big the project is, forget about all of the ideas that could be hindering you and standing in your way and start slowly but surely creating a habit that will help you take a little step every day to achieving what it is that you want. It's all about creating a new habit that will give you the determination that you need to achieve what you want. And so the death card beginning your reading, it's all about transforming your situation from a situation that is dead, silent, to taking action in the right direction to achieve what you want. And since this is your message and there's a promise of great success, let me bring out your tarot cards, my dear pile number three, and get some guidance on what you need to do exactly, step by step, so that you know what to do right after you are done with your reading, in case you decide that you want to start now. So, my dear pile number three, what are they advised to do exactly, please, <coughs> in order to build that habit that will put off the fire and finally make them achieve what they want. Because the amazing thing about your reading, my dear pal number three, is that you've got it. You've got it all. It's just about taking the necessary uh, action. So let's see what you have. I feel this one first. 
So this is the page of wands. You have the death card, unbelievable, again. Okay. You have, wow, the Ten of Cups. And you have the Four of Pentacles. So with the Page of Wands, this is, of course, very, very uh, clear. We've already established that it's, it's about beginning. Just start. And, and you know what? Actually, this right off the bat um, reminded me of something. You know, it says that statistically, most people don't succeed because a lot of them don't even start to begin with. So the mere fact that you have started, my dear pile number one, the fact that you, ch you have chosen to begun every single day should be your biggest celebration towards yourself. Because do remind yourself every day by starting, you have already begun something that most people aren't able to do. And sh you should clap for yourself, celebrate yourself for doing something amazing as just beginning. And that's why we see that in your reading, to just begin, uh, my dear pile number uh, three. And you will see by just beginning, you really transform the situation. Because once you're in, once you write that first sentence or begin that very first task, like washing the first cup in the sink or whatever it is that you need to begin, once you begin, you'll see that step after step, you'll be achieving what it is that you want. And that's what we see here with the Four of Pentacles exactly and the Ten of Cups. By taking small little actions with the Four of Cups, nothing that is too aggressive for you, especially in the beginning, nothing that requires you to emotionally um, make you suffer, um, to create that self-discipline in the beginning, make sure that they're not big steps in the beginning, but small steps. And as you take these small little steps every single day towards that goal that you want to achieve, that you are listening to the reading for, that is so important to you, as you take these small little steps every single day, you'll notice that with these, these very small steps, will be the reason that you achieve this huge goal that you want. And it's really all about taking one tiny step every day. You know that quote, there's a Tanzanian quote that I really love. I tell you guys about it all the time. It, it, it touched my heart from the single time, from the first time I heard it. And it says, little by little, a little becomes a lot. Just stick to these little tiny tasks every day. Remind yourself, it's very important that you just be begin. And once you begin, know that you've just transformed your situation for that day. Once you've begun, my dear pile number three, make sure you do at least one small thing on that day. Little by little, you'll notice that you're taking one step towards another, towards another, and towards another. And in a few days, you'll notice that you've taken a huge leap. You've done something big that you haven't imagined yourself doing before. And before you know it, you're building something, something substantial is going on and you're achieving what you want. Just make sure you stick to it. Later on, you'll have that motivation to do bigger things. But whenever you feel like you, you're, you don't have the capacity to take any action action for the day. Don't break off the habit. Remember that is your main um, topic of your reading here. Don't break off the habit of being consistent. Just do one simple thing. If it's as small as writing one single word on your computer and closing it down, you would have proven to yourself that you never break the habit because your habit will be your best friend in achieving exactly what you want, my dear pile number three. And my beautiful pile number three, you have what it takes to achieve great things. All you need to do is just put in the effort. This is exactly what I see in your reading. I wish you the 
best of luck from my heart, my dear pile number three. I do hope you heed that call. You're going to do amazing things. I hope you listen to your advice in your reading today. You're going to do amazing things. You're going to see. And that was my, and that was your reading, my dear pile number three. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a reading that I upload. Also, if you enjoy Zodiac Tarot readings, make sure you check out my other channel. It's the first link in the description box. And please don't forget to check out my productivity book, My Dear Pile Number 3. I promise you, this book could really help you out in what you're trying to achieve in building self-discipline and being productive very easily. And on top of that, all while enjoying the process at the same time. This book is small, straight to the point, and so you won't procrastinate reading it in the first place, but you'll find that it has all the key advice and secrets to becoming a productive person right away, all while enjoying the process. And so if you're interested in checking it out, you'll find a link to this ebook down in the description box. There's also an audiobook if you love listening to your books. And my dear pile number three, I know you're going to do great things. You're going to see, my dear pile number three. You just need to start. And that's it. And my dear pile number three, I'll catch you in the next reading. Bye.